Okay, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. It's, uh, this is the uh, August 17th, 2022 meeting of the Hubbardston Economic Development Committee. Uh, I am Whitney Freiberg, I'm president, obviously. Uh, Cheryl Ryan Chan is with us, Katie Young is with us, and Christopher Monroe. We have uh, our quorum, so we're good to go. And uh, we're gonna start off by having Cheryl read uh, Governor Baker's open meeting law for us. Thank you. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Subsection 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Hubbardston Economic Development Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the, new, on the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via Zoom. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website a comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, <clears throat> everyone received the uh, <clears throat> minutes from, uh, from our June meeting. Okay. Any questions? Any questions or comments? Anyone? They they look pretty accurate. Uh, the way it rendered in my printer, they kind of spaced out a little bit weird, but they they appear to be accurate. Okay. 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 Can I get a uh, motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Oh, any any other comments? No. Everybody. Oh, uh, Cheryl. In favor. No. No comments. Thank you. Okay. Terrific. Pardon me if I'm, if if throughout the meeting I'm a little bit I'm a if throughout the meeting I'm a little bit delayed. It's because I am typing the minutes in real time. So. Yes. Thank okay, your patience. Um, Thank you. Be, because it's an online meeting, we have to do it as a, an actual official roll call vote. Oh, okay. We'll okay. We'll do that. So, uh, 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 Christopher, you made the motion. Uh, yeah, M Monroe, I or yes. Katie Young. Young. Um, oops. <laughs> I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Cheryl Ryan Chan. Aye. Okay. Whitney Fiber. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. And uh, everyone had a couple of minutes to uh, review the uh, the agenda. Correct. Yes. Okay. I'm going to quickly send to because I'm not sure this is. Uh, uh, something that we're going to be speaking of this evening. I'm not sure if uh, Christopher and Cheryl have re, uh, have uh, a uh, photograph of the, uh, there's an option for a design of the Welcome to Hubbardston signs. I don't know if I had, a, if you were part of the committee when I had first gone over that. So I'm going to send this photograph to both of your phones really quickly, okay? and we can refer to it, so. Can you send it to me so I know which one you're talking about too? Because I've, this, sure. I'm referring to. So I wanna make sure I'm on the same page. There you go, There you. there's you coming in. Thank you. Uh-huh. Do we need to, um, Chris, Christopher, sorry, do we need to um, roll call vote to approve the agenda or no? Nope. No. Nope. Thank you. Other. Okay, I'm sorry, that was my understanding as well. Okay. okay. And Christopher. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, let me see if it's, seems like it's loading to Christopher or not. Okay, Christopher's coming in. Christopher's coming in a little slow. I'm just going to give it a moment. Cheryl, did you receive it? Yes. Okay. We need a cell tower. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have it yet, but I. I can also receive my email, so that's okay. All right, we'll go, we'll move ahead, and then when we get to it, I'll ch check and see if you received it or not. Okay. All right. So this real fast. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, all right. For the agenda, old business, Hubbardston business tours. We are ready to select our next date and the business uh, businesses that we're going to visit. Um, I think it's important as best we can to, whenever we have uh, uh, one of these tours that we try and uh, include one of the farm uh, farms in town if possible. Uh, I know that at our last uh, tour, uh, Katie and I talked about, we had wanted to fit uh, somebody else in. We weren't sure if they were open uh, we now see, you know, their business signed up and they are in fact uh, open and ready for business. And that would be heart to heart. Um, and that's a consignment shop. And so we'd like to visit them. And then uh, also perhaps a friendly ass farm here on High Street. Um, what does anyone think about that? Any thoughts? Good with me. Yeah, no. It's, 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 it's okay, there. Let me go to this because for some reason, I, I on my screen is like Zoom, a leader in the 2021 Gartner Magic Quadrant. It's not. I'm gonna see if I can't. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Okay, Katie, uh, uh, are you wanting to? Uh, if anybody else wants to, to join the, the tours, I mean, Katie and I have been doing them uh, since the beginning. Of course, now we're down to uh, four members, so um, we can't have more than two people go on these tours. Um, and if anybody would like to uh, attend one of these tours, uh, just say the word and, you know, uh, we can figure that out. I don't have to be on them. I just, you know. We've always been available and, uh, you know, have a lot of free, uh, you know, some free time to do this. So I would love to do it. I would love to participate. Okay. Um, and, um, okay. What now typically we've done them on Wednesdays, uh, that, but that can be changed. That's fine. Um, and if you and Katie want to do it together, uh, or if you want to do it with me or whatever, we, you know, decide we don't have to do, you decide at once that right this moment, but knowing that you're up for that uh, would be, you know, terrific. Um, maybe, mm, you know, say maybe you could come on one of them, um, but no, I mean, you know, just to see what we do and what we discuss, but I don't think that that's going to be permissible. I don't, unless we, unless we post it actually. Yeah, you'd have to post it, but you'd have to also let the people know that it's yes, we do. posted because right. um, technically, you know, people can come, which, right. you know, so yeah, which I've been on things that are posted before for tours and no one's ever showed up, but you never know. Right. <laughs> I know. There's always that first time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, all right, well, let's maybe continue that conversation or, or maybe just have a few minutes uh, with uh, Cheryl at a, at a later time uh, just to discuss it one-on-one -on -one, uh, about the types of things, you know, the information that we want to share with them, uh, questions that we like to ask them, how we can help them and that kind of thing. Uh, I will tell you, Cheryl, that in the past, uh, we've been met with a little bit of, of, of fear and pushback, um, you know, just that, you know, a uh, uh, employees of the of the town are visiting their place of business uh, has been a little bit off-putting to, to folks. So um, we do like to schedule the, the meetings. And when we get that scheduled, we'll then talk about who's going to participate and if we will make it an open one on, so just for your first one. 
so that you know you're used to how we conduct them. Okay. So we just gotta turn on the charm, bring our smiles, and be really sweet. We can do that. Yeah, um, and just tell them there's nothing to fear. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, if you'd like, um, and Katie and Whitney, if you're both available, like just after we're done recording tonight's meeting, we could just queue up our calendars and see if we can. Okay. Is that work? My calendar fills up really fast for the fall. So I'd like to put that on the books as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Um, I'd like to get this in, uh, in, in actually in the next, uh, uh, in the next week or two, actually. I think that would be great if possible. Okay. All right. And let me check that. Okay. All right. There we have it. So we have our two, we haven't discussed a date. We'll discuss that date when we talk afterwards. Okay. All right. And let's see. Oh boy. Okay. All right. I'm trying to close this and I don't seem to be able to open. All I'm right. Sorry. So can somebody can somebody just for the sake of the notes? There was heart to heart consignment, and the other one was what's it called? Friendly. Friendly. Yes. I'll let Katie say it because she loves saying it so much. <laughs> I'm going to get her on the flag eventually. Friendly <laughs> ass arm. Friendly ass. Yeah. Arm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. In, that's their mascot, the donkey. Gotcha. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. yeah. It's not our nickname for them or anything like that. <laughs> It is what it is. Okay. All right. Let me go back and bring everybody up. There we go. Okay. Christopher, it looks like it got sent to you. It looks like it's been received by you. The photo I sent you. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I have seen that before. Okay, good. Okay. So <clears throat> next on the agenda is the uh, town center overlay district bylaw. And um, as mentioned, as everybody knows that we have after a long period of time uh, reconnected with MRPC. Um, the, uh, you know, and I want to capture while we, while we have this momentum, whatever it is right now, uh, I want to kind of jump all over it. So one of the first things that I, that I'd like to talk to everybody about and get their input is that, um, a draft that, uh, that, uh, Jennifer had sent to me, um, about a zoning analysis had included, uh, what we call, uh, peer communities and, um, the list that she has. Uh, included, I'm going to read off to you, and I'd like everyone's input on uh, their feelings about these particular uh, towns, and if there's anything that they'd like, uh, that they don't think is appropriate or comparable, uh, to mention that, and maybe to also give a little bit of uh, uh, suggestions about uh, alternate towns. So right now we have Ashburnham, Barry, Bolton, Bristol, Rhode Island, Princeton, Rutland, Sterling, Templeton, Warner, New Hampshire, and Westminster. So the two off the bat, I like Bristol, Connecticut, and Warner, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, or excuse me, whatever, whatever yeah. they were. I have no idea what they look like, so I couldn't like even tell you if they're compatible or not. Right. If they make what were the two, Katie? Katie, you mentioned the, Bristol, Rhode Island, and which other one? The New Hampshire one. Warner, New Hampshire. Okay. Because yeah. I've, to my knowledge, never been to either. So I personally, no clue if they're compatible. Well, those were the first two that stuck out in my mind. And I know that uh, Christopher, because I spoke with him briefly, he does have a little bit of information about uh, Bristol, Rhode Island, and maybe he can fill us in. Uh, on his his knowledge about the town and why, well, and then y'all can tell me if you think that it's a, a comparable. The Bristol, Rhode Island is right over the Mount Hope Bridge, right on the water. It's an old whaling community. It's not too far off of like a Newbury port or something along the lines of that. So <clears throat> I think it has, I think it has pretty different issues from what we have. And I think that's true of a few of the ones that are on the list. Oh. Um, I know in, in terms of towns that have similar issues, Ashburnham has similar issues. I don't know that they have any solutions to them um, as of yet. Um, 
I'm actually pretty familiar with that because at one point my wife was the town administrator for Ashburnham. Okay, so that's right. Yeah. I'm pretty familiar with some of their economic development issues and how they would actually like to do some of the things that um, that we've been talking about doing. To the extent that they're further along, yeah, I, I think they are a peer town. Um, I don't know what we'll see from them for inspiration. I think it'd be good if we kind of reached out and look at some towns that used the natural resources they have around yeah. them to try to put right. together some economic development like Charlemont, Massachusetts or um, oh, Bur the Berkshires. Yeah, that yeah. there's definitely towns that are in the Berkshires that have kind of carved out a niche using what they have because the, right. the other issue that we have that's really unique to us and the other watershed towns uh, is the watershed. Uh, the fact that 43% of our town is um, is this open space that we have no authority over, that nothing can ever be built in, and that um, we get this pilot money, which is literally an order of magnitude less than the taxation would be. So we have some really pretty unique problems with that. Mm -hmm. And um, and coming up with an economic development plan and a use of the town center district that helps us work around that issue, um, I think it's going to be pretty important because like even even the fight that we're having with the school for funding right now, at the end of the day, that all goes back to the fact that we have 43% of our town that can never be developed, that we're not receiving tax revenue on. That's why we'll never be able to fund our budget the way they would like. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a common thread that runs through anything. So I would be really interested in seeing if there's towns not necessarily in Massachusetts that have had similar issues because there has to be there. There has to be ones where there's been like large federal projects mm -hmm. that aren't military bases because they create a ton of economic development or if they are military bases, ones that don't have personnel where just half the town is just not usable. Mm -hmm. uh, and they found a way to make the other half that that they do have usable um, and um and, and try to take advantage of the situation. Because I, and I know that's, that's not entirely squarely in the town center, but this is an, uh, an avenue and an opportunity to look for opportunities. So that's, that's why I think that we need to push back on that and take that okay. issue into account. Okay, and, and Christopher, how would, we, how would we find those towns? What would we be looking for um, uh, uh, you know, to, to find what towns would fit that? That's a very good question. Uh, I, would, I would start by seeing if Jennifer had any suggestions for it. Um, but other than that, I, I would just have to spend an extensive time on Google to, yeah. to try to figure it out. Okay, which we might have to do and I might just go ahead and do anyhow because I just would rather, you know, not wait for somebody else <laughs> yeah um at this point so Christopher, uh, um what about devons that that came to my mind when you described what you were just describing as a town that had to kind of rethink their old military um you know they, they have if you go through the town of devons it might be shirley but i think it's devons where fort devons was yep you know, yeah they, that that gets pretty complicated pretty quick because there there was a push to try to create a town of Devons, um, but the towns that actually make up Devons uh, were at a no way Jose. So although there's kind of that Devons economic zone that people refer to, it's not a town on its own. Um, it's um, they're they're kind of economic opportunity zones within the underlying towns. Okay. It's also completely filled with PFAS, but that's a whole different story. It's filled with what? Uh, PFAS. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's the new trendy toxic chemical. <laughs> the trendy toxic chemical. Chemical. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask you off off uh, off hand. Uh, uh, would a search for uh, towns that have largely, uh, or that have you know greater open spaces, be a search that I can do? Would uh, towns that uh, 
uh, offer uh, large, uh, you know, outdoor uh, amenities, let's say, you know, or have, you know, uh, you know, uh, trails and, and outdoor sporting and that kind of thing. It would, would that be a search that I would look at as well? It, it might, but the thing that's different is when you're talking about a regular national park, um, yeah. those are, those are kind of economic development opportunities, whereas the current arrangement we have with the state and what's going on with the watershed uh -huh. people people aren't traveling out to go walk the watershed like they could be i would like to see a world where they do but right. it's not the same as if we had like arches national park taking up half the town and people were were, were traveling here specifically for that sure. so from an open space standpoint yeah but from what it actually does to the economic development landscape and and what it does to just the the landscape for opportunities it's different looking at the national parks okay was was peter's ham on that list no what? hmm <clears throat> is it because their their population is small i don't know what i don't know what she based it on I don't know. I mean, some of them, you know, a lot of these peer towns were the ones that Alice had provided us with a while back. And what I could see actually that that is different from the that the towns that Alice gave us herself was the uh, Bolton was not included in Alice's uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bristol, Rhode Island, uh, Warner, New Hampshire. And I think that might be it. I think the rest that are on the list were the ones that had been long time, let's say, uh, uh, considered uh, peer communities. So were these peer communities to be strived towards? Because like Barry has sewer and water and has a lot bigger of a business district. And so does in, what was it on there? Sterling, I think you said? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, Princeton. and Princeton. Yeah. yeah. So, and like the same with Templeton and stuff like that. A lot of them have water sewer business districts like look a lot larger because of the water and sewer whereas like Ashburnham or Petersham would be more like where we are kind of there's no we need to move up so are these supposed to be like strive for districts or you know what I mean like I'm I don't know that there's so much strive for strive towards as they are you know they have similarities whether and those similarities could be an, anything from their you know their their population to their aesthetics you know mm -hmm. all kinds of things so so I, I, and i don't know how they were originally kind of you know uh, brought together or what the criteria was to create these you know this list of peer towns i don't know what that was i can find out from alice what is the what are the commonalities between them and we can go from there um but, uh, you know, I, th I think it's a it, it's it's from a large, you know, there's many lists that were kind of, you know, thrown into this, you know, a lot, di lot of different criteria, I, I would think. Yeah. Not just from based on, well, go ahead, from a, a planning board standpoint, when, yes. um, because that's ultimately where it came from. Yes. Uh, for the most part, when we put together the peer list, we look for similarities of the towns, but it's primarily based on issues related to zoning and um, oh. physical development um, so some of those towns do have things in common with us some of them don't uh, uh really I, I think what we should do is push back on mrpc a little bit and suggest they think outside the box a little bit on this and maybe consider something like charlemont mass or east burke vermont or one of these towns that are are next to that are rural but are next to things that are defined by open space where they don't necessarily have that in the town itself or like lindenville vermont or something along those lines and what's the town in vermont you mentioned east something uh there's there's three towns in vermont and i think at least one of them is worth looking at there's um there's lindenville vermont uh, which is actually a small city in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Um, there is Burke, uh, which is a small town, small rural town, and there's East Burke. Uh, and the reason they're relevant is because um, they're, they're areas where the economy used to be almost entirely agrarian. 
but they've hit the point where that doesn't really work anymore. Right. So over the last decade, they've been moving towards a economy that is largely fueled by um, by recreational activities, uh, like the the Kingdom right. Trails network is up there. And yeah, is that where the mountain biking stuff is that you can like go rent mountain bikes and like go like through farms, and woods, and stuff like that. Yep, and snowmobiling and hiking and uh -huh. uh, a lot of they're they're 15 years down the road from where we currently are because they eventually they they essentially all sat around someday and was like oh well we have all these farms that can't afford to make money and we don't want them all to get developed and maybe we could come up with a way where we can all work together to um to to get something going here where we can find other streams of revenue and that was the avenue they went they they got all the private landowners to work together with the public landowners and they put together this enormous trail network and it's now a countrywide destination for people who want to go biking or snowmobiling or hiking or to just stand on a ridge and look at wildflowers like and to me that would be the, that would be the optimum way to to promote Hubbardston to use yeah. what you know our our free god-given you know beauty and outdoor you know availabilities and all that i think is just a great great you know uh, thing to have a reputation for uh, to be known for to attract visitors to attract businesses who want to capture those visitors i think that you know that's uh, and i say and i think that's something that's going to be the easiest to uh, to use if you will because we don't have buildings, we don't have uh, uh, you know spaces for businesses and that, but we have all of this land and all of these opportunities, you know, um, you know, for recreation and that kind of thing, and we have a lot of it. Yep. Yeah, okay. ecotourism and agritourism. We've been yes. saying it. That's yeah. what we. That's what we have. Yeah. Yes. And, and why not use it? And why not use it? It's there for the taking. It really is. Yeah, and, and Burke and East Burke are probably two of the best examples of doing a win uh, from pivoting that way. But there, there's a couple other examples too that are not as far along, like uh, a Scutney or like some of the communities around Stowe. Like the places where there actually is a mountain, uh, a ski mountain or something like that, I think you have to throw all them out because mm -hmm. having it actually in your town changes things. But having it in the town right next door to you, that's something that applies to us. Yes, it does. Uh, and uh, having it have a potential impact on your economy, uh, that's also something that could apply to us. So that's really where I come from when I say we should uh, suggest MRPC look at some of those things. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I've been so, you know, uh, uh, you know, really driven about the Airbnb is our proximity to this, uh, to this snow mountain, this ski mountain. Um, and, you know, it's, I think, six or seven miles from here. Um, and that's something that we should be tapping into left and right. And we can, if we had, you know, if we were able to do short-term rentals, we could really draw an audience for that. Just that alone, just that mountain alone. And, you know, that, that, that uh, Wachusett Mountain, they're year round. They have events. Katie, you've gone with your, with your daughters to painting things and, and like that. And it's just, they, it seems like every weekend they have something pretty fantastic happening. Um, and I think we should try and tap into that as much as we can. Uh, do you think uh, that there's any uh, logic, let's say, in, you know, I want people, you know, when we present this, I want towns that people can relate to have maybe even visited or been through um, and that they, you know, so they can kind of wrap their head around it. You know, it's not foreign to them. You know, pictures are one thing, but to, you know, have gone through some of these towns or spent a day in some of these towns. Uh, you know, might uh, might be important as we're asking people, you know, uh, to vote on this. So my thought was, you know, maybe if we, you know, went a little bit west and a little bit north and, you know, look through towns uh, in, in those areas might be good because I just feel like maybe some of our residents have driven through, gone and visited or whatever, uh, rather than places that they don't have any familiarity with and the only you know, the only knowledge they're going to have are, is from our pictures and our description. Well, the ones that um, Chris was talking about when, when he started talking about that Northeast Kingdom and stuff, I haven't been there, but I've watched it on Chronicle. I'm just, 
I know yeah, exactly. Sure. Sure. I saw say once he started describing it and saying some of the key terms that he was saying. I'm like, yeah, I saw a whole chronicle about I know exactly yeah. what he's talking about. You know. And there, there is something similar going on in Massachusetts around Charlemont. So they um they actually applied through their Senate or to get a whole boatload of money from ARPA to um to work on their infrastructure around recreation, specifically trails and yeah. such. Mm -hmm. And uh they have a mountain rec right next door to them, uh Berkshire East. Mm. Uh and Berkshire East does uh summer and winter operations, biking in the summer, skiing in the winter. Yeah. And um they're they're using what's around them to try to make that a big part of their economic development plan. And I think we're all roughly on the same page on this as as a group um it's just i think the issue here is trying to get mrpc to really think about what we're trying to say and where we're trying to go with this right agreed okay so i will get with jennifer um and and in the next couple of days if anybody comes you know uh, any uh, ideas uh, locations please just email me or call me and let me know and I will, uh, I'll pass them on to Jennifer and I'll also ask her to revisit uh, her list um, and to, you know, carefully, you know, uh, come up with some other choices that might be more suitable. Though, you know, in, in fact, we just don't think that all of these are, are good comparables and we want to, uh, we want to switch them out. We'll ask her for a little input and we'll give her a little bit of our input and put that together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Christopher, I'm going to ask you again uh, to uh, to speak uh, to uh, of something. Um, uh, Christopher mentioned to me this uh, this law uh, potentially might affect us, and it is the uh, what is it called the MBTA communities? Yeah. So there there is this. Uh, well, let me just thing. explain. Let me just real fast. Uh, the reason that I want to to speak about this now is because um, I want to. Uh, apprise Jennifer of this if she doesn't know about it, but I, I think that some of the information that Christopher is going to give to us, you'll see where it's germane uh, to how we're putting this together uh, as we move forward. So there. Okay, Christopher, please. So there is this um, this state law and its popular name is uh, MBTA zoning. And essentially what it does, if you are a town that is I that either has the MBTA in it or if you're in a town that touches a town with the MBTA in it, it, um, it changes your zoning requirements. And if you fail to, re to follow the MBTA zoning, then you lose your ability to get a whole bunch of state funding. Like in a, yeah. it can affect your ability to get like chapter 90, like all kinds of stuff. Um, and why it matters to us is because there is a, there's currently talk of what's called the Northern Tier Rail Expansion. And that would, it would potentially put the commuter rail back into Gardner. Um, and if the commuter rail went back into Gardner, we would become an MBTA adjacent town uh, under this new law. And it would require us to have a reasonable area where uh, multifamily use is allowed by right. Now, what that would mean as a practical matter would probably be 750 units. Uh, and in that area, the law suggests you should allow a density of 15 units per acre. So it's a obviously a huge departure from uh, where we've been as a town and what we've been thinking. And the state will very much uh, attempt to enforce it against us if we end up with, um, with a rail station in Gardner. So I've been trying to raise attention to it with some of the, um, the town boards and committees that I'm involved with. It is not yet something that is a um, that is a super critical live issue, but it's something that's definitely hanging over us because uh, one of the things that the the governor is looking to do before he leaves office is make some pretty big improvements in the rail system. So there's a chance that this could come through as a last. <laughs> Uh, a last minute item uh, and that uh, it could be a way that the state tries to spend some of the federal money that was given to it. And if that happened, it would change a whole lot of things about Hubbardston real fast. 
uh, as a practical matter, we've been talking about this at the planning board a little bit. Um, we don't actually have to build that housing. We just have to designate an area uh, where you could build that housing by right. And as a, as a practical matter, I think it would end up on the north side of town uh, um, over where the uh, the sand pits are. Sand pits, that's yeah. For that kind of building. Mm -hmm. And that is in line with what the spirit of the law is because they want you to be able to have this in a place where you could conceivably have bike lanes that take you to uh, wherever the train station is or to the neighboring community. So it's mm. it's what the law had in mind. But like I said, it doesn't yet apply to us, but it's something that we all should be aware of because it very quickly could creep up on us out of nowhere. Yeah, and I think that you mentioned that there was, you know, we we're talking about maybe 10%, a 10% possibility of us, you know, being, uh, you know, having to, but when I say commit to the, you know, where it's going to, you know, be an issue fairly quickly. And so my thought was, you know, why start writing bylaws if you might have to rewrite them in, you know, in, in, in a few years? I mean, I think that that my thought was to, you know, I wanted to ask everybody what they thought about, um, you know, uh, speaking to Jennifer about this and seeing if there's anything in the, the grant that she's working on with us on, uh, you know, is there anything that of this that we're talking about, should it somehow be included, whether it's working around it or, you know, I mean, it doesn't maybe even have to be mentioned, but certainly as we're preparing this, you know, have it in consideration as a possibility and whether there would be, you know, alterations to the bylaw, you know, if it were as opposed to were not but I'd like her to be able to consider that. Uh, in doing that though, it might kind of, you know, make this take even longer to, you know, to get this all written up. And so uh, I think we need to discuss that. Do you think there's any merit, Christopher, in, in uh, you know, having Jennifer include this potential, you know, this possibility as she's, you know, working on this grant with us? I think we just need to, to talk about it and know that it's something that's on the table. I don't think it's necessarily going to change the work that happens with the town center overlay, except okay. in, in the context of if we start thinking about things where we're like, well, we would never have the people to justify this, or what would happen if all of a sudden we added 2,000 people to the town in a relatively short order? That's where I think it comes into play. As far as actual compliance with the law, uh, the planning board is going to work on that if it becomes a live issue. Uh, at this point, it's something we're just tracking as a as a policy matter. Okay. Uh, mostly because we believe uh, if we tried really making any changes ahead of time to try to comply with it, though they would not get voted through. Um, okay. So I think it's going to be something that we'll only do if we have to do. But it's still worth knowing that it's out there because okay. I, I don't. The area that would be impacted is not likely to be the town district because right. of what the aquifer uh, protection zone is and because of how that area perks, it's pretty unlikely we would ever say, well, we need to make an area where we have multifamily by right and let's do that in downtown mm. because there's just not the infrastructure to deal with it. So, um, that's one of the things I think we need to talk about to make sure that we're correct about that. Uh, I don't think it's going to implicate the town center downtown area. And like I said, it would most likely end up in the north side of town uh, by where the sand pits are because it's just a natural fit. Okay. <clears throat> and you'll keep me posted as, oh, I'm sorry, Katie, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, the sand pits are um, watershed area as well, though. Uh, there are areas there that are not part of the um, the aquifer protection zone uh, where you could have that kind of high density development. Um, we talked to Bill Murray about it and we only did a, a back of the napkin calculation. We didn't do a formal uh, feasibility study or anything like that. But, um, but we did essentially a simulated fire drill and we we're like, well, what if we have to do this like right now? Like where could we conceivably do this? And uh, the areas that we identified were, were that way, potentially. 
The ones on uh, off Pitcherville or the one off 68? Uh, that area in general, because it, keep in mind, we wouldn't be building them. We would just take an area of the map, draw a line around it and say, this is now the multifamily by right zone, which would likely induce somebody to build there. Okay. Okay. Cheryl, you have any questions for Christopher on this? Uh, and are we going too fast for you? No, you're not going too fast at all. I'm keeping up. Um, I do not have any questions. If I do, I will certainly raise my hand, but thank you for checking in. Okay. Okay. All right. And then before we close the, uh, this particular uh, topic, um, <clears throat> Jennifer said, had said that she would like this, uh, you know, uh, finished, completed this, uh, this grant by November, December of this year. Clearly, no, we're not going to, you know, we're, this is not going to go on any agenda until 2023. Um, however, I would, uh, I wanted to ask everybody, because she said that she would be available to come and speak with us about this uh, zoning analysis, et cetera. Um, and again, even though, you know, time, you know, we're not in that crunch now because we're out of the out of the ball game, let's say, okay. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to, again, you know, keep this momentum. So I was gonna ask everybody if they thought that they might be available for another meeting between now and our September meeting. In other words, I don't really wanna wait for September to move forward with Jennifer. Uh, I'd like to, you know, slip a meeting in, maybe, you know, with just that on the agenda, okay? Um, and, uh, and, and get full, you know, understanding and, and transparency of where we're going with that. Um, and wanted to ask everybody if they thought that they might have availability for such a meeting. I think that makes sense. Uh, I would like to suggest that uh, at the same time, the planning board also needs to kick off the solar bylaw revision with her, and she's also the lead person on that. So if there was any open to trying to do those two meetings together. So we only have to bring her in for one thing. Uh, I think that would be helpful to both of our causes. I have no objection to that. Katie? No, I'm fine. It's just September starts to kick up all the meetings again. So it's like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we figure it out. We've also been in a tough spot with, uh, with planning over the summer because we haven't had a land use coordinator. And the um, the yeah. the TA transition is also affecting us quite a bit. Like it is pretty much everybody in local government. So September, when everybody's kind of settled back in in place, is going to be a better time to really work on anything because we're we're just trying to tread water to keep our head above right now. Okay. Well, I I I'm fine for September. I, however, would like it in the beginning of September if possible because our next meeting would be in the middle. I don't really want to wait that long. I think that I can be doing a lot. We can all be doing a lot between now and then to, you know, to further this. So, I, if, yeah, go ahead. I can reach out to schedule with you where okay. we were planning on having a meeting the first Wednesday of September. Okay. If you think there's a chance that that works. We could, we could try to double those things up and uh, okay. do a joint EDC planning and then okay. close that and then move on to the boring planning board stuff we got to work through. Okay, and so you are talking, uh, when you say that you're, uh, you're talk the first Wednesday of September? Yes. So that would be the 7th? Yes. Okay, I'm I'm fine for the 7th. Uh, Katie? Yep. Okay, Cheryl? Okay. And, and I do have to apologize. I, I only have about 10 more minutes, so I just wanted to throw that up okay. there for you. The seventh is fine. Okay. All right. So Christopher, yeah, we'll go, we'll we'll do that joint meeting on the seventh and we'll just keep in touch about that. Sounds good. Okay, terrific. And I'll let uh well, I think we should pro pro probably both contact Jennifer about it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh okay. Uh welcome, uh, uh the welcome signs. Um, so I uh, reached out to uh, Franz uh, Steiner uh, about the welcome signs. Now everybody now sees uh, their two styles, the ones that are already uh, in place on, along 68, and then this uh, photo of the one from Troy. Um, I asked him because I'd spoken to him about this before, 
the 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 prices were changing so quickly they were raising they were rising exponentially um but i asked him to please get me a uh a, you know the current what's the price for this one and what's the price for that one you know today um and last time i asked him they weren't too different so i don't expect that they're going to be much different in their pricing right now so this smaller frame uh i'm sorry smaller sign was something that i saw on a trip up to new hampshire uh thought it was great looking and kind of passed it around and i think everybody thinks that it's a you know nice looking sign um i thought it might be interesting uh, if we did, uh, if I had uh, maybe uh, Lori uh, Reed put on the, uh, uh, the town uh, email and ask everybody to vote on what design or which style they would like the next sign to be. I felt that, you know, that could be fun because I think that when people are involved in such a thing, they feel kind of a, you know, a greater sense of pride in it. Perhaps they might even find the larger sense of ownership and want to become sponsors. That's just one of the reasons. But um, what does anybody think about putting it out there and having the town get involved in which style they'd like for the next sign? It sounds reasonable. Just we need to be ready for comments from the peanut gallery because that happens with anything that goes online. Oh, geez. OK, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Well, I'll, uh, have just, it direct, I'll have it directed to our email, so I'll be dealing with it. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. You guys uh, set it up that it's just a vote, no comment. Sorry, Katie. No, that's fine. It doesn't matter. They'll find a way to comment. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so the next question, and then, you know, if you need to leave after that, Christopher, I think I'm comfortable with that, is uh, the location of the next sign. <clears throat> So we have uh, we we've covered Route 60. I'm sorry, uh, the uh, 68, you know, Gardner and 68 uh, uh, Worcester. And so our other available spaces that we had kind of uh, fine tuned a couple of years ago, because uh, we chose five, was uh, Route 62, the old Boston Turnpike. That has a traffic uh, at the time, and I think that was in 2019, uh, late 2019, perhaps early 2020, and that traffic was 3150. Uh, New Templeton Road is another uh, location, and their traffic is 3773. And New, uh, New Westminster Road, uh, and their traffic is 2893. Really? Westminster was lower? It was. Huh. Yep. Hmm. Uh, Gardner, 68 on Gardner was 6037, yep. and 68 on Worcester was uh, 5684. Yeah. <clears throat> Any thoughts on where that next sign should be? And by the way, I also, call, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. I was gonna say the highest number. <laughs> okay, the highest number. Yep. <laughs> that would be New Templeton Road. Yep. Okay. That's my Anybody thought. else who travels back and forth on these roads? What are, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> I'm still too new to even be able to locate where some of these roads are. I'm sorry. I'm trying to learn the town. That's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go with the group. <laughs> I mean, they're all roughly the same, so it doesn't really matter. I just say if we just work our way down for the traffic count and we just go with it, you know, and that gives us a plan. Say it again, Katie. I'm sorry. Go say it if again. Sorry, if we just keep working, like go from the highest number down to the lowest, and that gives us a plan, you know, one, two, three, okay. New Templeton, okay. uh, the, the Barry coming in for Barry, and then New uh, Old Westminster, uh, excuse me, New Westminster. Okay. Well, one, two, I, did, I, I, I did hear from Ryan saying that he, uh, he suggested New Westminster, um, and that has the least amount. I can reach out to him and see what, you know, what that thought went behind that. Um, because it came in that way. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. <laughs> I, I don't think there's really a wrong answer here, uh, just as long as we per, use some kind of methodology and stick to it, because you can you can argue all of it. Well, I will say, though, I will say when I first put these uh, these uh, flyers out and this was pre-COVID, so 
um, I had given everybody choices. We gave them the choice of where they wanted the sign to be, you know, what place they wanted to be sponsoring a sign. Uh, and in fact, one person had uh, responded to me and she was specific about, she was coming in from Barry, so she was very specific about where she wanted it to be. Uh, we don't have to do that because I think that would open us to like a lot of math, you know, trying to figure out how many went to this location and that location. Um, so, uh, you know, if we disregarded uh, uh, Ryan's suggestion, let's say, I think it's probably a good idea to go from larger to smaller locations. Um, but if we, uh, I'm going to talk to Ryan and see what his thoughts were behind it and share it with you. And we'll go from there. And if he doesn't have a reason that we, we feel is, you know, important enough, um, then we'll do the, uh, you know, going lower in the traffic. Well, are we already, are we like on a set path to buy one? Yes. Well, yes, then I want, I want, yes. I love Ryan to pieces and I know he's <laughs> here it comes he, well he's out you know what I mean like, like <laughs> anymore. let's just pick and go okay yeah, yeah I I great. echo that thought there there really isn't a wrong answer we just need to to pick a methodology and go with it so I don't think we need to make it overly complicated okay. I um I have hit the end of my window though so I do need to log off okay uh, I don't know if there's anything else pressing you have for me. Otherwise, I'll check in with the minutes or watch the tape if you need me to. Sounds terrific. Okay, oh, well, yeah. take care. Okay, everyone. let me just ask you real fast. Yep. It was at, it was the last thing on the agenda. I'll jump to it real quick. Is there anything that you can share with us about the ad hoc committee, where we are with that? Um, what's happening? Uh, there's no updates on it yet because uh, land use has kind of been frozen. Yeah. And that's been uh, taking a ton of my time. Uh, and uh, we're also still needing to get a good solution to the fact that the attorney general doesn't think we should regulate businesses based upon lot size. So those issues are still open and need to be closed before we can move it forward. But oh, I'm expecting yeah. that to happen soon. Okay. So um, we'll be picking it back up shortly. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Okay, okay well, Christopher, thank you very care, much. Okay, just the girls. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and just to let everybody know, um, I have uh, reached out to uh, some businesses. Uh, they have shown interest in the signs, um, and I wanted to wait and see what you know uh, what everyone thought about the uh, the voting for uh, the design. You know which design, and um, and to determine uh, the location. And then I am to email uh, three different people and let them know what we've come to and, and go from there. Okay, so, and, and the reduction in price, um, in, in case um, Cheryl, maybe you don't know this. Well, I thought we decided at the last meeting, we're reducing the price to $500. And that doesn't matter whether it's the larger sign or the smaller sign, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same amount of money. Okay, all right. And not only, I, I will create another uh, flyer and send it out to all the businesses uh, that I have, you know, on my business list. And, you know, certainly also uh, speak in person with the three businesses that showed an interest and wanted me to get back to them when we determine these things. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. And so that's it for the welcome signs. Uh, <clears throat> next on the agenda is our meet and greet. Now, uh, you know, in the past couple of meetings, I mentioned where we wanted to uh, have, um, we wanted to use field day to promote the meet and greet and then use the meet and greet to promote the farm bylaw as well, or, you know, the accessory use bylaw as well as the uh, commercial overlay bylaw. Uh, I think that maybe we need to revisit, uh, you know, that. Um, and, uh, and if so, uh, what, what do you think our uh, meet and greet theme uh, should be? And I'm wondering, I'll just put out, you know, what I thought, Katie, I thought that our um, uh, online Q&A was pretty successful. And I thought if maybe we'd, we could do something, you know, similar to it, but in person, um, you know, that might be, that might be a nice invite for people. 
to be able to come and talk to different department heads, different businesses, have the businesses talk to the department heads and all of that, you know, but this time in person. We could try it. Um, uh, a few of the department heads are obviously like yes. land, land use is changing and we don't have somebody. We uh, Nick is just starting um, right. and he would Mallory's equivalent. And then we do not have a person set permanently to take Roland's spot. We mm. have a, from that's basically babysitting for, I think it's like 90 days. So concern on that end, because building and land use is a huge chunk. Uh, Then you have Board of Health, which would be the next huge chunk. They're pretty stable. So, um, but yeah, that would be my only concern about that, where building and land use is, is still kind of up in the air right now. Okay. You know, just like, hey, you're just starting tomorrow. Great. Come on. Let's meet all the businesses. Let us really turn into the wolves. You know, what is it? (laughs) Baptism by fire. (laughs) And that's the only thing that concerns me about that. Other than that, I like the idea. Don't get me wrong. I just, brand new. I just, I don't want to like scare the crap out of them, you know? Right. (laughs) Right. Well, Do we have any other ideas for a theme for 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 this next meet and greet? Um, we could do something like maybe introducing the the guides of the guide that you've been working on. Uh huh. Um, but that's more for the residents. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm just like spitballing. Um, yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Like just, I, uh, I mean, some of them still feel like nobody knows who they are. I real, I, I was just talking with one of them not that long ago and they still like, they can't even get their business name pronounced correctly. They still don't feel like they're part of it. And we do have some new businesses in town, like you know, heart to heart since we had that initial one meet and greet. So maybe we just do like we did the first one where they come talk to us and tell us their concerns because that was a while ago. It was a while ago, but our first one was uh, we just invited businesses and I, and I, and I do remember, and I, and I'm sure you do as well. When Johan had mentioned when we had gone to the business tour up there, okay. At Edward Jones, he had mentioned to all of us that he thought um, it would be great to open it not only to other businesses, but to any of the residents. And I like that idea. Then let's do that. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm fine with opening it up to the residents and see who comes mm-hmm. and, and we can do like we did last time with the little, you know, hors d'oeuvre thing and, you know, yeah. and let's all talk. You know, like yeah, just very that? casual. I mean, I think that really being in person means a lot to people. Um, and I just, and I feel from, you know, the conversations that I've had with their businesses, whether it was while I called them during COVID or visited them during your, you know, your town fair and that kind of thing. I think that we would get a, uh, a good turnout. You know, our first one was our first one. That was pretty good for our yeah. first one. Our second one was great. So yeah. um, if we, you know, if we make a decision now, I can definitely kind of, you know, flood the, uh, the uh, uh, not town, what's coming up, field day with that mm-hmm. information. With your permission, maybe I can come down to Dingy Dash and uh, put a couple of flyers out uh, yeah. during that and invite folks to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just keep in mind the one component that we'd be missing at that, 100% yeah. TA. Was what? Uh, the uh, TA, because we, we only have Sandy as an interim. So like his last time, Ryan came, right. He, he did speak, you know, right, to he did. Yes. Stuff like that. And, you know, reassured, you know, some of the business and talk with the people, answer some of the questions, you know, things like that. So yeah. that would be the component that we would be missing, but I don't think there's nothing we can do about that right now, you know, and we're not going to yeah. have a PA set in place till Christmas time. And then they got to get settled in. It's like, it's no different than the land use slash you know, building department scenario that we have going on right now, or, you know, the cheap 
scenario. You know, it's always going to be right now for a little while, we're going to be in flux. So, okay. So okay. But you know what I'm thinking as you're saying that is that, so we invite some of the, the department heads or committees as well. It's not based on that. So if only six out of 55 or nine out of 16, whatever show up, it's, that's fine. It's not that we're promising you're going to meet all of the department heads or anything like that, or all of the committee chair people or members or whatever. And I think, you know, the more people involved, some can answer questions that, that Ryan would have answered or a TA would have answered, but somebody from that committee or that department could answer it as well. So maybe it's a good idea to open it to them as well. Yeah. And just have a, you know, true meet, a true meet and greet. We'll just call it the meet and greet of all meet and greets. And some of them are business owners too. So hopefully. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. Okay. Cheryl, any thoughts? Yeah. Um, hey, oi. So, I don't know enough if I like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, uh, yes, I have a thought. Um, you know, my job right now in, in my mind is, is to just do some deep listening to what you're saying. And, and I just missed something. So or maybe something either I missed something or something's missing because what I heard you just say, I can't remember. I think it was Katie just say that one of the big things that they hear from businesses in town is that people don't know who they are. Yeah. And so what I heard you just conclude is that your this meet and greet should just be a casual kind of conversational thing where people get to know each other, but you just identified a problem that has the potential to become, in my mind, a theme for the meet and greet, where it's kind of like a think tank, or at least some portion of the meet and greet, where there is a, a facilitated conversation right. that says, you know, by and large, uh, the economic development committee is is hearing that businesses are frustrated because people don't know about them so let's take the opportunity while we're here tonight to um to start thinking about uh, brainstorming ways together as a as a business community that you might think of to to help promote yourselves or or as a as a business community help promote each other. I mean, I just feel like you, if you identified a problem, right? Let's make that part of the the theme. Does that make sense to you? It does. And I will tell you that our first meet and greet was for just that, and that's what I mean for this one as well. The only difference is that in the first meet and greet, we only invited businesses. The idea was for them to come and talk about uh, uh, complaints that they had, suggestions that they had for us to help them. Uh, feedback from the community, uh, finding out whether the community was supporting their businesses and all of those things. So it's much more than just meeting and shaking hands. It's a forum to ask questions, to talk about concerns and that kind of thing. The first one was just like that. The second one was online with all of the committee, uh, all of the department heads, that same thing. And that's what I meant for this third one as well, uh, just to, but the only difference from uh, meet and greet one and meet and greet three is that we would invite residents as well and some of the committee members or department heads that might be able to, able to answer the concerns of the businesses. So, so it's everything that you're talking about uh, 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 like we did the first time. So I'm trying to envision this. And what you just said to me was, we asked the businesses what they think we should do. How we can and help them. No, how we how, can help them. Right, so how we can help them. But but are they, has there ever been any businesses that have um, had their own action items coming out of those conversations? Like what 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 we can do as either individual or collective businesses to also participate? I mean, we're a committee of four people. Um, right. I'm going, you know, oh, you open it up to the businesses saying, well, we'd love for you all to do this, 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 and this. And how, you know, does that come back to these four volunteer people from the town to actually, is the expectation that 
this committee is going to get all that done or are there subcommittees? You know what I mean? Like I would come out of that being like, shoot, are we going to have to try to come up with all these solutions or are these businesses also saying, well, I think this is a problem. And so I'm going to participate by doing this. I'm just, I'm just wondering. Well, I never anticipated that we would be able to have a solution to every uh, you know, to every problem, let's say, but we wanted to be able to address them. We wanted to assure them that we would continue to try and, you know, find a solution if there wasn't one available right away. Um, I don't, I know that in the beginning, our, our first one was uh, uh, very much around the timing of the uh, sign uh, uh, bylaw, correct, Katie? And that was something that we heard uh, um, f uh, you know, from people about, you know, uh, uh, allowable signs and that kind of thing. I don't personally remember many complaints from people. I have, you know, intermittently uh, since then, you know, uh, spoken to uh, several people. I've gone to, uh, to meetings at the planning board, uh, Katie has, as, as well as other people uh, in support of uh, one, one or two of these businesses. Um, I think that, uh, I think, I don't know, I mean, you know, my intention or our intention was to hear them to you know try and find a solution but i you know i never said come and tell us your problem and we'll get it fixed because mm -hmm. you know always in the back of my mind even with the edc i know that there are many things that we're working on now that you know we're never going to see in our lifetime come to come to fruition you know because right. we, i just we, think that when when you know as the host of any gathering if there is a um if there is a welcome message for people to bring forward things that they are concerned about then there's an implicit um expectation that solutions will come forward or be offered and so on and so forth so you know i i get it i hear you saying you know you know it, it's it's kind of it, i don't know if we would I, I, maybe I'm overthinking, but I don't know that if I was a business being invited to say, what are your concerns, voicing them and then being told, well, you know, we can't guarantee we're going to do any of this would would have a negative, you know, I, I would have a negative response to that. I mean, sure. I guess I'm trying to understand what, you know, what the question might be, if there's any potential for um, um, you know, the businesses to be encouraged to help each other or, you know, what are, do you see what I'm saying? I just, I I'm do. trying to figure out the purpose of this meet and greet, the, the final expectation of this the end game? Greet, other yeah. than just shaking hands and saying, oh, that's nice. I sure. met that person. Sure. Well, you know, first of all, I think it's an, an important for us to recognize uh, what some of the issues or concerns are. And again, you know, if we can't, you know, if there's no resolution in six months or whatever, I, I don't know uh, that that lies with us. I think if we address them and we try and find a solution, if it takes us, a, you know, a longer time, uh, then, then that's the best that we can do. But I want to hear from everybody, uh, you know, what those concerns are and whatever we can, you know, uh, rectify quickly of course we're going to do. And those things that, you know, some things might become zoning issues. They might become, I mean, I've heard them, uh, you know, uh, Katie and I at one of the uh, business tours recently that we went to, were, you know, talking about some of the restrictions that they had for events and that kind of thing. These are things that we need to address. We need to have some kind of answer. Um, I'm never going to guarantee anybody that I can fix something without, you know, if I, if I, if there's any question that I can, you know, fix it. Uh, but I think that they need to be heard, and I think that they need to know that we are ongoing working on, you know, on, you know, the betterment for their businesses. And that's what I want, you know, I want to instill that trust with them, that, you know, open communication with them. That's been, you know, kind of dormant for many, many, many years. And, you know, since we resurrected this in 2018, you know, we've heard a lot from folks, and this was an opportunity folks didn't have anyone to talk to about these, uh, you know, these concerns or issues for many years preceding that. So I, you know, I feel that, you know, getting knowledge about some of the things that need to be addressed is, is helpful. 
Um, I think that there's a way to present it that, you know, we're not going to fix anything overnight, but I want them to know that we're taking all of this in and we're not putting it on the side in my extra, you know, spare room, but, you know, it will be addressed and, and, and worked on to the best of our ability. But I'm, I'm never going to promise anybody, you know, a, a, you know, a, a fix. And, and I think that I, I'm, I don't necessarily agree that people would have that expectation, uh, especially if we kind of word that invitation, you know, in, in, a, in a way that, that they wouldn't think that. If we could just say it's, you know, it's a coming together of, you know, communicating and talking about things and maybe businesses sharing ideas and, and, and like that, um, I think that and anything more than we could do uh, beyond that would be bonus. Oh gosh, we are running out of time. Katie, what do you want to say? Okay, so real quick, sometimes it's good to be able to hear the problems that you don't know exist. So if you don't right. hear, the second thing is a lot of times it's meeting your neighbor that you never knew. And right. because you're in your business, you're in your business, you're not over there at that business necessarily because you guys are open at the same time. So sometimes getting them to meet each other can help solve some of these problems because they might work together and do something like you were saying, Cheryl, where they can fix their own problems by working together. And then the other thing too, is I have found with chatting with people is sometimes it's not necessarily me fixing their problem, but I point them into the direction that they can fix their own problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, and to be realistic, I think we had like 10 people at the last one. So don't freak out like there's going to be a room of 50 people. No, at but the first one, at the first one, at the last one, we had a bunch of people. The online one, we had yeah. a bunch of people. Well, that's different. That was online, but I'm just saying the one that was in person, I think we had that's like right. 10. So that's right. Let's get real. But we, also, but we also had a very small list of the businesses. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I'm saying it's, it's don't expect... <laughs> like 400 people to show up all looking at you to solve every ungodly problem you have. Let's, that's not what this is. This is yeah. us facilitating and chatting and hearing things and maybe pointing them or introducing them. So not only they can work with us, but work exactly. with each other. Exactly. Cause I always say that to people when, you know, when they call me or contact me and I say, you know, I can't answer that, but I will put you in touch with the person who can. I think that just, uh, you know, making our, us to, available to them where we're not so scary, you know, we're, we're, we're attainable, we're approachable and that kind of thing, I think will generate a lot of good will and open communication. Of, and if that's the most that we get out of this, I'm all for that as well. Just for them to know that we are ongoing, you know, seeking ways to assist them. And okay. I'm gonna say 15 minute meeting is bullshit, Whitney, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, but that was before I had been reached out by um, uh, by Jennifer. So that added some time to it. Um, so, okay, I'm ready to uh, to uh, 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 get a, mo well, there's nothing left on the agenda. And if I can get a motion to uh, close the meeting, please. I make a motion to close the meeting. From Katie Young. Okay. Second Cheryl. from, by, you have to take off your mute, Cheryl, and say it. I second the motion. There you go. Second by Cheryl Ryan Shand. And uh, thank y'all. <laughs>